everyone, welcome to 6th, 7th and 8th channel of Baiju's. I am your teacher Ankita and I welcome you in today's class. How are you all? Good evening everyone, good evening. So good to see that all of you are here. Welcome to the class everyone. I hope that all of you are in a good health and I hope that all of you are excited for today's class. So we have something really very cute today. Good evening, Gun Gun, Jitendra Vedant, Kanak, Aisha, Priyaganshu, Janatul, Ayan Divya, Shraddha, Nupur, Mimo, Lakshita, Harsimran. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Yes, how are you all? All good? Are you excited for this session? Awesome. I hope that you can see me clearly and, and I hope that you can hear me clearly. Yes. Awesome, everyone. So in today's session, we will be discussing about the reproduction, right? It's a very, very important chapter from the exam point of view. And uh, this particular chapter is important for your future studies also, right? Now, in this particular chapter, we will be discussing about the reproduction. You will be learning more about it in your higher classes, but we have something very, very interesting in today's class. Yes, this is for class 8, right? But if you are in class 6 or 7, you can still be here and can learn about the concept. Yes. I know, Aisha. I have more cuter picture of the dogs. So basically, we're talking about the animals, right? And uh, we're talking, like, of course, we have a very cute picture of a dog. Here we have something more cuter than this. See over here? I'm sure you have seen this picture. Yes? Yes, right? Uh, yeah, this will, this will be my position here. We can move me a little bit. Yes. Yes, so yeah, I was just thinking about the dogs and I thought, yeah, why not? Let me have, yes, yes, it's my, yeah, yes, her name is Sia, Sia, her name is Sia, yes, so why we have these cute pictures of the dogs over here, right, they're very, very cute and you know, of course, they are very adorable. They are very, uh, they are best friends, right, of humans. And uh, we all love dogs, right? That's very good, Yukta, very good. Hi, Palash, welcome to the class. Yes, Ashif, it's my dog. Yes, her name is Sia. Yes. Oh, you have a cat. I'm sure when we have a pet around us, we all feel good about it, right? And we enjoy our time and we are very, very happy when they are around, right? Yes, Nandini, I saw your, uh, I saw your uh, chat on the, in your chat box. Yes, I saw that and acknowledging you over here. Yes. So now we are discussing something about the reproduction, right? And we are discussing about the pets. So we have more dogs over here. Okay. Now coming back to a very very important point, right? Now we know that every organisms actually produce the offsprings, right? I'm sure. My God, you have four dogs at your home. That's you're very lucky. You're very lucky. Hi, Jashika. Sorry, Jashika. Yes. Hi. Okay, everyone. So I'm sure around yours, right? I'm sure around you. I'm, you must have seen different animals, plants, they always produce, right? Their next generation, I'm sure all of us have seen that. Yes or no, everyone? Come on, come on. Yes. Ha, please do not. Again, a very important thing, everyone. Let's do, please don't spam. You might get a time out. Okay. Yes, very good, right? Plants also reproduce, animals also reproduce, and of course, different organisms that we have on a planet all reproduce. We can say that reproduction is a very important characteristic feature of the living organism. Yes, from microorganism to the biggest animals that we have on a planet Earth, we, we will see that there's a reproduction happening. Yes? 
Hello, come. Ashwara, ma'am is here. <laughs> yes. Okay, everyone. So, are we clear with all of this, right? I'm good. I'm good, everyone. See again. Let me just have all of your attention back. I think. I think many of you have joined just now. Welcome to the class, everyone. Welcome to the class. Yes, ma'am has other shoots. So ma'am just left. Yes. Yeah, ma'am will be coming with a class, but ma'am has a very important class now, right? So ma'am just left over here. I yeah, ma'am will definitely will be able to read your uh, comments, and I'll say hi from your side. Now, everyone, what are we doing today? What are we studying today? We are discussing about the reproduction, right? And we are discussing reproduction that it's a very important characteristic features that we see happening in all the living organism, be it the microorganism, be it the very big animals, right? So. What we understand by the reproduction. Yes, Ashif. We will have that. No, you're right on time, Ashif, right on time. So tell me everyone, according to you, what should be the definition of reproduction or what is reproduction? Thank you, Gauri. I'm good. I hope that you're also doing good. Hello, hello. Hi, Pradeep and everyone. Come on, everyone. Let's me, let us focus over here. Yes, tell me everyone, what reproduction is, like in very basic term, what would be the definition of it? Making copies, okay, the process of producing babies or young ones, continuation of the species, yes, very good. Yes, Anita, very good Vedant, yes, Kamlesh, yes, Rangoli, making copies of themselves, very good Rakesh, very good Gungun. So we have an understanding, right? Let's talk about the reproduction mode. So we know that that reproduction is a process of producing offspring that are biologically or genetically similar to the parent organism, right? So we know that in the reproduction, the parent will be producing either an identical copies or exact same copy or a similar copy of themselves. Like the humans, when they reproduce, of course, we have the small babies and all of her, right? When we look at ourselves, we are very similar to our parents. We are not identical to our parents, but we are very similar to our parents. Now, we are produced by the process of reproduction, right? And it actually helps in the continuation of the species. What do you think, everyone? Clear? Rakesh, we will be discussing about that, but in a bit. Yes. It is very essential. This is a very essential process for the continuation of the species. It actually helps us to survive. Yes, very good. Gayatri, right on time. We have just started. Okay, everyone. So I hope that all of you are clear with what is reproduction is. Yes, very good. Very good. Right? Now, recently, I'm sure you have read in the news that the population of a planet Earth have reached 8 billion. Yes or no? So many humans on our planet Earth. Yes? Harshit offspring are the children, right? The next generation, we call it as the offspring. Right? So we will be reaching, or we have actually reached 8 billion, which is a huge number. And of course, this is because of the reproduction, right? It's a result of the reproduction. So now, now that we are clear what reproduction is, Let's take a look over here at the importance of reproduction. Reproduction actually help in the continuation of the species. If there's, near, if there's no reproduction, what will happen? If there's no reproduction, of course, we know that, right, the species would completely go vanish, right? We'll see that the species will extinct. Yes? So, now we are clear that why the reproduction is important. Right, everyone, are we clear? So, it is very important for the for the continuation of the species, to protect the species from the existing, right? They should not be getting extinct. For their existing, they should reproduce. Very good. So are we clear about this, everyone? It's a two marks question that write the importance of the reproduction and here we have. Are we clear? Yes, crystal clear. That's nice. Very good, Nandini. So I hope that all of you are paying attention. Awesome, everyone. See, we have just one hour. We have to finish this whole chapter. I need your support. Right? And we'll be covering each and every point. Don't worry. If the screen is blurred, refresh your page. Awesome. Very good, everyone. 
Now let's talk about the different types of reproduction. So reproduction broadly can be categorized into two different categories. We have asexual reproduction that involves only one single parent. This is very important everyone. Super important. Everyone please do pay attention here. Asexual reproduction only one parent is involved. There are no gametes formed and fission happens. Okay. These are the important points that we will remember about this. Yes, it happens, Nandini, no worries, over here we'll discuss. Harsimran, just give me a minute, we'll discuss about that also. Are we clear? Yes, very good, yes. So there are three important points to remember in the asexual reproduction. Only one single parent is involved. Gametes are not involved. Gametes are nothing but the germ cells, right? Like sperm and the ovum. They're not involved, there's no fertilization. And it happens with the help of a fusion. We'll discuss about it, right? What is a fission over here? We'll discuss about it. Then, of course, we have sexual reproduction. Now, sexual reproduction may we have two parents involved, gametes are involved, and we'll see the fusion. Okay. How many of you have heard about the fusion dance? Tell me, everyone. How many of you heard about fusion dance? Oh, you know what? In my school, we will have a fusion dance performance. Or maybe I am performing a fusion dance. Yes? Fusion word we usually use when we are talking about something which is getting mixed, right? A fusion of two things, right? A fusion of two things, right? I'm sure there are a lot of covers that we have fusion of, you know, an English song or a Hindi song together and it has a very nice beats and people do dance and of course I'm sure you heard about it. Dan Asif, Dan Asif, yes. Fusion. Fusion means mixing. What does it mean? It means mixing. Whereas fission, right? Whereas the word fission, F-I-S-S-I-O-N. Fission means splitting. Clear everyone? It means to split. There are two important things. Fusion means mixing and fission is to split or to divide. Very good Vedant. So we are clear with this, right? So in asexual reproduction, we will see splitting. Whereas in the sexual reproduction, we will see the fusion mixing of this, right? Clear everyone? Very, very good. Right? Now that we are clear over here, let's talk about the gametes. I see that few of you have doubt with the word gamete. Now gametes... For all of us to remember that they are the germ cell. They are the germ cell. Okay. Or we can call them as the reproductory cells also. Reproductive cells also. Okay. We can call them as the reproductive cells. Can you look over here everyone? Yes. We can call them as the reproductive cells also. Now they are the one. Right. We have two types over here. We have sperm and we have the ovum. Sperms are present in the male, right? Basically, sperms we have in males. They are the male gametes. And ovum or ova or the egg is there in female. Everyone, are we clear with this? Bye, bye. Bye, Ashif. Okay, are we clear? Yes? Very good. So what are gametes? Gametes are also called as germ cell or reproductive cells. In males, we have the sperms and in females, we call it as a ovum, ova or egg. Very good. Now everyone, let's take a deeper look in the asexual reproduction. Now it's a two marks question. And this is the same thing you'll be learning in your 10th standard also. So why not pay attention now and learn it forever? Yes, Vedanta, I hope that now you're clear. Okay, now in asexual reproduction, we have these points. So here we have, so a different question can come in your examination for two or three marks. Make sure you remember this. Take a screenshot, everyone. Super important. What is the difference between asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction? Simple thing. Very good. Now, let's take a look at the amoeba ka reproduction. Now, amoeba reproduce by using the very 
very very simple method of binary fission now binary fission means splitting of the cell into two here we have a parent cell i'm sure you can see right extreme mein you can see there is a parent cell slowly slowly what will happen we'll see the nucleus getting divided first we can see nucleus is dividing following it follow it by the cytoplasmic division pehle nucleus is dividing then the cytoplasm will divide and eventually we have two daughter cells just by simple splitting amoeba will be producing two daughter cells and these will be identical right can you see they will be exact copy of their parents they'll have nothing different clear everyone yes so in asexual reproduction there is only one single parent involved yes there are no gametes right we don't see any gametes and there is a fission no fusion there is a fission clear everyone remember this diagram they will be asking you to draw this diagram also in the examination yes what will happen if the parent cell will die of course if the parent cell is not alive and of course if there is one organism is not right is not alive that will not be able to reproduce right yes harshit will discuss about it bachche give me a minute one amoeba into two cells yes harsimran yes very good budding is also an example for it and talking about the budding we have the budding over here yes shruti what is not clear do write it in the uh, you know chat box i'll be able to help you with that so what is a budding budding is nothing but another type of a asexual reproduction where only one single parent is involved right in the budding what we'll see we'll see that there's a growth of bud right can we see the small chutku so tiny little bud is growing like like this hydra is an organism bachche a very a very small organism microscopic organism we have yes right so we'll see this bud and it will slowly slowly grow and once it is mature right it is very strong in many when it's kind of a mature it will detach itself from the parent's body and it will stick on a surface and of course it will become a new individual okay clear everyone yes vedant you're absolutely correct ma'am parent cells kya ho jayega ka divide can you write your question again i think i missed it yes ah very good yeast is also right we'll see the is uh, budding in yeast also yes azad harsimran i will i will ha the parents cell will live okay yes yeah the potato ka bud is different from this bud okay budding i'm explaining okay so we here everyone we are looking for the uh, very interestingly we are looking at the asexual reproduction which is budding right now in budding what we'll see we will see that we have we have a organism right over here a parent organism slowly slowly budding mein kya hoga we'll see a growth of bud okay we'll see a growth of bud and the bud will get mature dheere dheere when it's getting food right it will get mature and when it's completely mature it will get detached from the parent's body and it's a new individual clear what is the definition of binary fission so in the binary fission what you can write that during the binary fission we will see that there is a formation of two daughter cells okay from one single parent and identical copies will be formed very good stuti yes clear everyone are we clear with this very very good yes so we have a uh, binary fission ka other example we have we can see in the leishmania yes gayatri have answered your question very good in the water dhanushri in the water okay now everyone moving ahead we have a very interesting story how many of you have heard about the story of the dolly sheep tell me nandini notes we will be discussing about it about the frog we will discuss about it i'm sure all of you have heard right in your textbook also is mentioned right in your textbook we have this thing the story of a dolly sheep so dolly was formed right but it, the the process was very different it was not a natural process there were other involvement of the humans yes right it's okay if you haven't heard 
Now we are discussing. So dolly was the first sheet, right? That was kind of a clone. It was the identical copy. So what happened? I'll, I'm explaining you. Everyone, please pay attention. And then I'll be taking your doubts. So we have this. We have one sheep right over here. Right? So from one sheep, we took the cell. Okay? Can you see over here? From one sheep, we took the cell. And from the other sheep, we took the egg. The nucleus basically. Clear? Everyone, are we clear? I'm sure all of you remember the cell and the nucleus. Raise your hand. We know that the genetic information, the genetic material is present in the DNA, which is there in the nucleus. Right? Clear? To tell me, everyone, are we clear? Yes. Very good. Very good. Okay? So, what we saw that we have the cell, right? We, we took the cell. Right? We took actually two cells. One from the body, right? And we took the nucleus of the other cell. Now, of course, we added over here and we had a foster mother. And what happened there? We basically saw that the dolly was a clone, which was the exact copy of the... From where we got the nucleus, right? We saw that it was the exact copy of it. Yes, are we clear everyone with this? Yes, yes. Are we clear everyone? First take a screenshot of this and then we'll explain again. It's a very important thing. Take a screenshot in your textbooks also they have mentioned this. Yes, very good. Okay, yes, I'm explaining again. So, so they were, so Dolly has two mothers basically. Okay, very good. So what we actually took one, we just took the cell and not the nucleus. Other cells means right from the body, right? And of course the nucleus was removed. Okay. Donor matlab jo aapko kuch donate karega. Clear, right? Yes, I'm explaining everyone. Please pay attention now. Everyone, full focus and then I will be answering your doubt, right? Okay. So the other cells are of the memory glands. Basically, you have the nucleus. See over here, everyone. We have the cell, right? These are the stomatic cells from the body. They, they remove the nucleus out of it. So nucleus is not there. Nucleus came from the another sheep. Okay. Right? And we know that in the nucleus what we have, we have the genetic material. Right? So once that was a case, we saw that when the fusion was done, when we added the nucleus into the cell, and of course the embryo was formed, and eventually it was added into a foster mother, we have the dolly, which was an exact copy of its mother. Are we clear everyone? See, we all, I'm sure all of us have heard about the... Uh, Clones, right? So clones are formed where they are the exact copy. Anita, I don't know where you're seeing flea cells. Over here we have the egg cell, right? Foster means surrogate. A mother who is just carrying the embryo. Shraddha, they are the memory gland cells. Okay? Yes, got it? Very good. See, in simple language if I say... Two cells they took. One cell they took and they just removed the nucleus of it. From the another cell they took the nucleus and then they removed the cell. Harshit, other cells are from the memory glands of the sheep. Okay? They are the stomatic cells basically. Very good. Now everyone answer this question. Fusion of gametes happen during. Fusion. Fusion happens during what? So, Mahesh, the process of, you know, removing the nucleus out of the cell is done in a lab. Very good, everyone. The correct answer is the fusion of the gametes happens during the sexual reproduction. Are we clear up to here? Yes, are we clear? Very good, very good. 
Ah, yeah, we don't have a poll now, but for the next question, we'll have it. Yes. Clear, right? I hope that there are no doubts. Till now, it's very easy, right? We just have half an hour, everyone. We have to see. One nucleus from... And yes, you're absolutely correct. Shagari, yes. No doubts, right? Okay, everyone. Now, you tell me, how many of you heard this thing? You know what? You are very similar to your father. Or, you know, you have your nose like your grandfather. Or your hairs look like your mother. Or your eyes look like... You know, uh, your grandmom, right? We all have heard about these things and people will be telling us. Now, this is because of the sexual reproduction. We know that from our parents, we get their genetic material, right? We get the characteristics from both our parents. So, sexual reproduction occurs by the fusion of the specialized reproductive cells from male and female. And we call them as sex cells or the gametes or the germ cell. Okay, I know curly hairs from my father, that happens, right? So we, here we have everyone, so we are talking about the gametes, right? We know that we call them as reproductive cells also, we call them as the germ cells also and the sex cells also. These are actually the one that will be giving us different characteristic features, right? You and I have a lot of similar similarities with our parents. It's because of that their genes came to us, right? Yes, because it, we will see the mixing of it. Okay, tell me everyone. Let's suppose, let's suppose, um, let's suppose we have, right, let's suppose we have two jars. Right, let's suppose we have two jars, right. Let's suppose in one water, uh, in one we have added a little bit about the water and in one we have, let's say, few colors right when we mix it what will have we have a colored water yes a colored water will have right similarly basically we got the characteristic features of both of these yes so that's how the reproduction work okay everyone are we clear very good yes we'll be discussing about it in a minute in a minute so what we know now over here that reproduction is a fusion process where we'll see the mixing of the gametes, right? The genetic material will be getting mixed. Now you're asking few doubts over here. What is DNA, everyone? Let me quickly go back and then only we'll move ahead. What is DNA? DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid, right? And DNA is present inside the nucleus. Nucleus have chromosomes. I can see some of you have asked, what are chromosomes? Now, when this DNA, right, which is a double helical structure, when this is completely coiled and packed and it will form the chromosome. Are we clear? Right? The condensed form, the condensed form of the DNA, compactly packed in the nucleus, we call them as the chromosomes. Clear? Yes, very good. And DNA have these small, small fragments. Right? Okay? This small fragment, we call them as genes. We have genes, right, Rakesh? For example, my hair color is black. Right? My hair color is black. So the gene of my hair color is, right? The gene that I got is present on the DNA. Are we clear, everyone? So there are a few things you have to remember. Your eye color, your skin color, your hair color is because of the genes. Right? Is because of the genes. Clear everyone? Awesome. Now let me explain you. I can see there are still some doubts. Okay. Everyone let's focus over here. We have DNA. Right? DNA is present in? Come on. DNA is present in where? DNA is present in? The nucleus. It's very long, right? It has to pack properly. To pack it properly, the DNA has to condense. It is very in a very coiled form. So, when the DNA is in a coiled form like this, right? We call it as chromatin. During the cell division, you know what? These chromatin will come together and they'll form this beautiful structure that we can see and I'm sure you must have seen 
in your textbooks and somewhere these are the chromosome what we call them as we call them as chromosomes clear everyone now so i'm sure all of you are clear yes chromatin we have dna we have chromatin and the chromosome okay and on our dna we have small fragments which we call it as genes and they will give us the characteristic features hair color skin color eye color etc shraddha chromosomes are made up of dna only na they are the one that we will able to see during the cell division and of course they move from one generation to the next generation see can i tell you for example you are in eighth class right let's suppose your name is shraddha in when you are very small your name was shraddha but as you are growing maybe your name will change maybe your parents will call you by some other name your friends will call you by other name but you will remain shraddha only right the the characteristic features that you have will remain same yes that's the case with these though the dna is at a different different stage called by different names but content the same hai clear hello everyone i can see many fifth just join us now if you're new here don't worry you can watch the video from the back don't worry you can watch it from now itself we'll be starting with a sexual reproduction and if you're new here please do hit the like button and subscribe to the channel no issues no issues shreya okay manjeet yeah now that you have mentioned i'll call you manjeet okay okay everyone now we will be discussing about the sexual reproduction in humans everyone focus now human we have two types right like when we talk about the reproduction we have two uh, two types we have asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction now we will be looking into the sexual reproduction and first we are discussing with the sexual reproduction in males everyone are we ready i want full focus in the class and i can see right many of you are talking see again please make sure all of you are paying attention here okay now let's talk about the male reproductive system so what we have over here the is a male reproductive system first we'll discuss over here about the importance and then we'll discuss ahead yes so we know that in the male reproductive system the primary organ of which actually help with the production of the sperm is the testis right testis is the organ which is present outside the body in the male right in the scrotum and it is present outside so that it can maintain the temperature a testis will see the production of sperm a one marks question everyone remember this right in testis sperms are produced this is very very important then from the testis it will moved to the sperm duct in your textbook they have mentioned sperm duct it is also called as vas deferens okay so over here we have the sperm duct so from the testis it will move to the epididymis and from there it will move to the sperm duct from there to the urethra and then out to the penis very very important everyone yes sperm is a male gamete absolutely correct yes okay now in between there are two important glands that we have that actually help in providing the nutrition and the lubrication for the sperms to move in the male reproductive system and in the female reproductive system are we clear are we clear just you just have to remember three important names which is mentioned in your textbook we you have to remember about the testis right penis urethra and the sperm duct clear in males there is only one duct there is only one tube that actually carries the sperm and the urine can you see this tube over here everyone the yellow one that i'm uh, you know just colored it can you see this this is the bladder urinary bladder right which actually stores the urine So in males, there's only one duct that will be carrying the urine and the sperm. Clear, everyone? So in the examination, they can ask you to mention about the three important parts of the male reproductive system and their function. It's okay, Amrita. Welcome to the class. Clear? Then of course, they can ask you about the sperm, which is a male gamete. So this is how the sperm looks. Okay? It has a head, middle piece, and a tail. so in the head it has the nucleus 
right which have the genetic material the middle piece have the mitochondria that actually help the sperms to move provide the energy and to move then of course we have the tail which moves and actually help in the movement of the sperm clear see everyone are we clear very good very good so they are really very small they are produced in the testicles right and they have these three important parts yes yes padmini mitochondria is present in the middle piece it provides the these it provides the sperm's energy to move forward clear very good very good so we are kind of done with the male reproductive system right we know that in the male reproductive system the primary organ is testis it is where the sperms are produced then uh, from the sperm duct which will be uh, which is attached to the epididymis which is on the top on the top of the testis will carry the sperms to the urethra right and then it will moving out of the body yes amrita okay let's move ahead everyone now we'll be discussing about the female reproductive system here we have the female reproductive system so in female reproductive system we have four major parts we have ovary ov duct urethra and the vagina now ovary is of course is where we'll see the production of ovum which is a female gamete okay uh produce in testicles there are two right testicles basically that's why we say like that yes i will be discussing about that yes very good so in ovaries we'll see the production of the ova right then ovary duct is also called as the fallopian tube clear is also called as a fallopian tube so yes amrita pay attention we are discussing over here now okay so the other name of ovary duct is fallopian tube so from the ovary the egg will move to the fallopian tube or the ovary duct then it will move to the uterus right and of course the baby will grow in the uterus itself okay this is important if the fertilization is happening we'll see that the growth of the baby will occur or the embryo will go grow vagina is also called as the birth canal through vagina only the sperms will be entering into the female reproductive system clear everyone yes so these are four very very important parts it's a very easy part we have ovary duct which is called as a fallopian tube right then we have the ovaries which actually produce the ovum the male uh, sorry the female gamete then we have the uterus where of course we'll see the uh, growth or the you know development of the embryo and vagina through which of course these sperms will be entering into the female reproductive system there is one more part over here which is called as a cervix right it will allow the sperms to enter into the female reproductive system yes aisha yes okay are we clear everyone gayatri have just mentioned bachche cervix is over here clear 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 so ma'am the primary organ of the female reproductive of ha huh, yes sir yes shraddha it's the ovary mayank i will look at the doubt bachche one minute what is the doubt ha huh, i'll talk about it we'll just give me one minute mayank about the chromosome i'll talk education only one minute we'll go over there okay here everyone we have the female gamete right which is the ovum can you see over here it's the ovum it's a female reproductive it's a female reproductive cell right produced in the ovaries and contains a very big nucleus can we see over here right we have the very big nucleus in females now it's a very uh, a question that you all ask in females we have x and x chromosome okay we have a number of chromosomes right in humans we have 23 pair of chromosome okay clear out of that one pair is sex chromosome female has x and x chromosome and male have x and y chromosome clear very good you know this very good very good yes awesome everyone so if in a females we have x and x chromosome and in a male we have x and y chromosome yes okay everyone 
Now let's move ahead. Let's see this question and then we'll be discussing about the hen. Okay. Which of the gametes is non-motile? Okay, tell me everyone. Which of these is non-motile? We have male, female, both A and B or none. Which gamete does not move basically? Yes, it's a very easy question, right? Yes, very good. So the female gamete is non-motile. Basically, it does not move, right? It does not it doesn't move. Male, uh, male gamete, the sperms move. Very good. It was an easy peasy question and we got it. Okay. Now let's talk about the fertilization. So till now we have discussed that in females, ovary is producing the ovum, right? And in the ovary duct, the ovum will move. Now let's understand this. What is fertilization? Everyone over here, if you see, can you see these small dots, right, that are moving towards the egg up over there? Now, fertilization is nothing but the fusion of male and female gamete. Fun with Chaitu, I will explain you once. Uh, you need to spo stop spamming. We'll come over there. Give me a minute. Motile means moving. Absolutely correct. Yes, so what we see over here is the fertilization. Fertilization is nothing but the fusion of male and the female gamete is called as fertilization. Yes. Motile means it will move. Non-motile means it will not move. Okay. Very good. Very good. Okay. So are we clear what is fertilization? And here for all of you who have still some confusion, please look over here. Fusion is a nothing but the sperm uh, is the fusion of the sperm and the ovum. It is called as the fertilization. And nuclei of sperm and the nuclei of ovum fuses to form the zygote. Okay, this is important, everyone. And zygote is a single cell say, single cell which is formed after the fertilization. Now, many of you will have a doubt on the ma'am, what is a zygote and what is an embryo? So after the fertilization, the single cell which is formed is called as zygote. Okay. Yes, please ask your doubt. Yes, please ask your doubt. Yes, very good, very good. I know, I know. Ma'am, do eggs lay, hen lay eggs. Amrita, we will discuss about it. No, please don't spam. We will discuss about it. See over here. This is the ovum and this is the sperm. Okay, this is the sperm and this is the ova or the ova. Clear everyone? Harsh, we will be tackling this topic in some other class. Not today. Nandini, got it. Please don't spam. Nilakshi, we will not be discussing about the triplets and twins in today's class. In future, we'll have a separate class for that. Very good, very good. Are we clear everyone? Clear, very good. So with this, we are done with this topic. There was a, a little bit more that you need on this particular slide, right? So I think there was a few of you who was asking about this. So here we have the female gamete, which is an ovum. It has a nucleus and the cytoplasm, okay? And female reproductive system have ovum, right? Which is produced in the ovary. Right, ovary is a very important part, very important primary organ. Then we have ovary duct, right, which is also called as fallopian tube. And we have uterus where we'll see the growth of the fetus. And then of course we have the vagina through where the sperms will enter into the female reproductive system. Very good, very good. Yes, thank you Aisha everyone. I hope that you have hit the like button for the video. Everyone quickly hit the like button for the video. A sexual repro uh, reproduction happens only when a single parent. There's no fusion involved and usually they'll form the identical copies. Cervix, of course, above the vagina, there's a place from where the sperms will be entering into the uterus. Very good, everyone. So we're done with this part. Now, can, can I ask you a question? Yes, please don't spam everyone. Come on, very good everyone, hit the like button and if you are new here, please do take a movement and subscribe to the channel. Nice, very good. Okay, okay.
How does the embryo develop inside the female body? What do you think everyone? Ma'am, in fertilization only one ovum is released? Yes. Yes. In female, right, only one egg is released every month. We'll be discussing about that. One minute. Very good. Mahesha, yes. It's okay, it's okay Amrita, noted your point. Zygote is a single cell that is formed after the fertilization. Very good, very good. So, how does the embryo develop inside the female's body? We know that it happens with the help of, of course, it's there inside the uh, female reproductive system, right? And what it has, it has the uterus, right? And uterus provides, one minute, okay, this is getting a little bit hang over here, huh? So, see over here, after the fertilization, which is nothing, but the fusion of male and female gamete, you can see there's a formation of zygote. Everyone, are we clear what is a zygote? Tanvi will discuss that. We're just coming on that. Everyone, are we clear what is a zygote? Zygote is formed after the fusion of male and female gamete. Very good. Now this is a single cell, right? It's just a single cell. Now cell divide, right? Cell divide. Now this one single cell will divide into two cell stage, then four, then eight, then 16. And at 32 cell stage, it will actually go and get attached in the uterus. Right? It will get attached in the uterus. And the uterus has a thick lining of blood, right? That is actually there to help the growing fetus or growing embryo, right? It will be providing the nourishment. Clear? Yes, very good. It will divide rapidly and it will reach up to a stage of blastula. Very good, Avni. Yes. Cells divide means the number of cells will be increasing from 1 to 2, 2 to 4. Very good, Pradeep. Yes. Amrita will be discussing about it. Yeah, please ask your doubt. Ha, huh, it will attach on which side? That depends. Right? Yes. Okay, Aditi. Right, everyone? So, I hope that this is clear. The development of the embryo we'll see. And this is how the fetus will be developing into the mother's body. Right? Here we have an unborn baby is there. That will be developing more and more. And of course, it will be getting the nutrition from the mother's body only. Clear, everyone? See? Right, the number of cells will be keep on dividing and slowly, slowly we'll see that the fetus will develop. Right? Over here, we have a very important organ. So you will be learning more about in your higher classes. Right? And they get all the nutrient by the help of the very important organ which is there, which is called as a placenta. Now placenta provides the nutrition. Basically, it is an attachment between the mother and the fetus. Right? And it provides the nutrition and carries the waste from the baby, from the growing fetus to the mother. And get all the nutrient from the mother to the fetus. Very good. Gayatri, fetus means the bigger stage of the embryo, right? Which is growing inside the mother's body. We call it as a fetus. We don't call it as a baby. We call it as baby once it is delivered outside. Okay? Pleasant in Hindi, I don't know what it is. But... Oh, acha bata rahe ho. But placenta is a very important organ which provides the nutrition. X and chromosome, yes. Yeah, it, it mayank, the X and Y chromosome in male can be equal and can up, go up and down. But they will have both the chromosome, X and Y chromosome. Very good everyone. Okay. Now coming to a very important part of the hen, right? See, so we are talking about the hen, right? Yes. So, hen actually lay eggs, right? So, inside the hen, what we have? Basically, we, they reproduce, right? And of course, they lay the egg, right? And of course, inside the egg only, we'll see the growth. And hen will sit on the end to provide the worm. And we will see that slowly, slowly, we'll have the cute chick come out of it. Yes. So, 
hen may what we know that right the organisms that actually lay eggs right aur ye question to bilkul nahi ke egg pehle aaya ya murg matlab anda pehle aaya murgi no answer to it right and it's a debatable topic yes the organisms which lay egg we call them as the ovary parents right the other one that lay eggs right animals who lay eggs and the young ones develop after laying the eggs we call them as the ovary parents very important thing very very important thing clear i hope it's clear to everyone yes yeah we know that yes it does yes dhanushree yes very good yeah it's a cell that we can see absolutely correct then we have the organisms which give birth to the young ones right like us right so the organisms which actually grow inside the mother's womb is called as the viviparous animals right animals which give birth to the young ones directly we call them as the viviparous animals are we clear there are two types of organism that we have one which lay eggs and there are one which does not lay eggs yes i have to finish the class everyone so please let's focus over here yes sexual reproduction mahesh it's sexual reproduction everyone are we clear can we see the nucleus of the hen egg uh with the help of microscope we can clear everyone are we clear come on come on very good very good mahesh can you write your question properly or what is the doubt asexual reproduction shubhash is a type of sexual uh, is a type of reproduction where only one single parent is involved yes very good so we have two types of animal we have viviparous animals which give birth to the young ones and we have oviparous animals which actually lay the eggs yes samrata frog is a oviparous animal because it lay eggs right nandini uh, i think lot can happen uh, this class will not be able to help us in understanding that and we don't have that much time for me to explain you don't worry you can write your uh, question in the comment section i'll answer there so let's talk about something really very important over here that there are two types of fertilization we have internal fertilization and external fertilization internal fertilization that means that the fusion the fusion will take place in the female reproductive system only okay we'll see the fusion happening in the female body and we will see that it usually takes place in the terrestrial animals yes are everyone are we clear with this inside the body we will call it as a internal fertilization we see in the dogs cats humans the external fertilization means that the fusion of the male and the female gamete will be happening outside the body are we clear it take place outside the body of the female that's why it's called as the external fertilization clear yes very good very good ha metamorphosis shall we will just discuss now clear right everyone now let's discuss about the external fertilization so you may hear we have the female and over here we have the male so what will happen we know that frog are the amphibians right frog are the amphibians over here sorry i will not be able to see this frog are the amphibians and they release their egg and the sperm in the water itself and then they will fertilize in the outside only yes and once they will fertilize they'll form the zygote clear so the fertilization is happening externally so the female will be laying many number of eggs right yes and we will see the fertilization happening that is the external fertilization yes and then of course let's quickly talk about the life cycle of frog right so we have the fertilized egg these fertilized egg will actually are they in, they, they are actually present in the back of the frog right they will actually develop into a small larva we have early tadpoles they will get more mature we have a young frog and eventually will have a adult frog 
clear yes my young we can say that yes they are also example of the external fertilization harsh we can see the external fertilization in humans if we are talking about the IVF treatment where the sperm and the ovum are fused outside the body of a female in the lab condition right very good everyone are we clear yes right this is very very important and the life cycle of frog is very important and what we call it as the I'm sure we call it as the come on everyone I'm sure you know the answer very good very good now let's talk about the metamorphosis right let's talk about the metamorphosis so we're talking about the butterfly over here and I'm sure all of us seen that there are different stages of it drastic change very good very good no Aditya not ignoring you but can't understand the question that you're asking if you can repeat that that will be great I know yes Amrita so they have a jelly substance which is you know which is there to protect the growing uh, embryo that are there in the egg yes very good so we have this butterfly it will be laying its egg right and what we'll see we'll see that slowly slowly of course these will develop into a larva and this larva will be eating so much food right it will become a little bit more and then of course we'll see the cocoon stage and eventually see the cocoon stage over here they'll just stay there for a very long time and then of course they will become a butterfly so this whole process the transformation of the larva into an adult involving a sudden or a series of continuous change in the body of an animal during the life cycle is called as the metamorphosis okay what are the drastic changes Gayatri means sudden changes right from a small single cell they'll become like they will become an organism of multiple cells and we'll see the different changes happening in their uh, in their life cycle so that whole process is called as the metamorphosis are we clear I can see that there was someone who said that didn't get it but I hope now you are clear with it yes everyone are we clear with this hello everyone I hope that you are paying attention yes very good very good so again I'm repeating metamorphosis is a very important process which happens in the organism yes Priyanshu explaining you again so metamorphosis is a process where of course we'll see the transformation happening from a small single cell right we'll see the different stages of the animal like if you talk about the butterfly from an egg they will see the larva larva will again grow more then we'll see the cocoon stage and then finally a butterfly so we have different stages and each of these stages will see drastic changes sudden changes and that's how the organism will grow we call all of it as the metamorphosis this process is called as metamorphosis it happens of course we have talked about the frog also clear awesome clear clear now let's talk about the importance of the eggs right so we know that eggs of the animals like frog does not have a hard shell like hen cells right hen egg they have a layer of you know they have a layer of jelly that will be holding it together provide the protection to the egg they're exposed to the fishes that's why they have to produce n number of cells yes and of course more number of cells are produced for the higher probability or they can save more yes uh, mantesha so it is actually a fluid which is present in the uh, in the uterus basically where the baby is growing right not in the uterus exactly in the where the baby is growing it is surrounding by that fluid amnion okay amniotic fluid we have it's a layer that is formed right inside that we have the fluid yes very good Pradeep oh sorry I think Aditi uh, vast difference is also called as a sperm duct that will be carrying the uh, sperms from the testes to the urethra yes thank you so much Amrita harsh semen is the mixture of the lubrication the fluid and the sperms what will happen if the egg is not fertilized in the female will see the menstrual cycle yes very good very good I hope that everyone this is clear let's have this question everyone which of the following is the viviparous animal quickly everyone which of these actually produce the young ones yes 
Manjeet, yes, I remember your name. You're testing my knowledge. Nice. Yes, we will be having that chapter also. You have that chapter. In the upcoming weeks, we will be making sure that we have that chapter. Okay. The correct answer is dolphin. Right? The correct answer is dolphin. Yes, very good. So in your in your uh, in your textbook, we haven't discussed about much about the menstrual cycle, right? But if the fertilization is not happening, what will happen in the female body, right? Every month there's one egg which is produced. So if it's not fertilized, what will happen? The uterus will lose the lining that it has, right? And we'll have the menstrual cycle. Clear? Everyone, I hope that it's clear. Exposed uh, means it's open. Right, Harshit? It's open. For example, if, if frog is laying their eggs and the sperm in the water, they're exposed, right? They're open in the water. Fish can come and attack them. Right? And they can get destroyed easily. So, are we viviparous animals are those animals that actually give birth to the young ones? Very good. Keshav, so Rix is, is present above the vagina which actually allow the sperms to enter into the uterus. Shreya, drastic change means major changes in the body of the individual. Very good everyone. So with this I think we have finished our chapter. Yes. And let's quickly have a summary everyone. So we have discussed reproduction is nothing but a process of producing offspring that are biologically or genetically similar to the parents. There are two types. We have asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction means that only single parent is involved. No gametes are formed. And the parents will, the daughters or sorry, the offspring will be the identical copies of the parent. We have example of fission, which we see in amoeba, binary fission in amoeba, budding in hydra. Okay. Yes, then we have sexual reproduction. We discussed about the male and the female reproductive system. Sperms are the male germ cell or the male gametes. Ovum is a female germ cell. Okay. We'll see the fusion of the male and female gamete happening and we call it as a fertilization. After fertilization, we'll have the zygote and zygote will grow, go, grow into a fetus. Then we discussed about the internal and the external fertilization. Internal fertilization happening inside the female's body and external fertilization happens outside the body of a female. Then we have oviparous animals and viviparous animals. Oviparous will lay the eggs and the viviparous animals will actually give birth to the young ones. Are we clear? Yes, everyone, are we clear with this? Come on, come on. Very good. See, I'm giving you points. By the end of the chapter, you should tell me how many points you got. Yes. Very good. With this, we are done. And here we have the homework question. Who was the first test tube baby in India? You can write the answer in the comment section below. Amrita, you have a very interesting question. So what happens in the hen, right? That the, the eggs that we usually have in the market are not fertilized. Okay? Are not fertilized. Very good, very good everyone. So please do write the answer in the comment section below. That's your homework question. And I hope that all of you have registered yourself for this amazing quiz. Please, if you haven't already, submit your uh, entries and join the quiz. And we have this English speaking course. Please make sure to go in the link. Check this course out. It's a paid course for two months. It will actually help you to improve your English. And as we say, we have got you covered. And I hope that you've hit the like button for the video. And do share with your friends and subscribe to our amazing channel. IVF. What do you think? Okay, right? Um, this is very easy. F, the IVF may F, uh, stand for the uh, fertilization. In vitro fertilization, right? Fertilization is happening inside the test tube. Basically, that's the meaning of it, the full form of it. Intra, in vitro fertilization. Okay, very good, everyone. What will happen if the eggs are not produced in the female body? Harsh. If the eggs are not produced in the, uh, in the female body, of course, it will not be able to produce the babies, right? They will not be able to, it's not that, 
right uh, the few, if the fusion will not happen of course then of course there is no uh, formation of the next generation of the offspring so it there are times when the egg is not produced in the female reproductive system very good everyone i think with this we i'll end my class nandini it's a topic that we'll be discussing in some other class not in today's class okay very good everyone hasni ovum is very small only bachche yes very very good everyone thank you so much for all the hard work and for paying attention to the class i hope that you have enjoyed this session we will be covering up uh, the different parts of this chapter so please make sure to subscribe to the channel and stay tuned to this amazing channel everyone we'll meet again bye bye everyone and keep on learning with bye jubes tara one minute everyone very important thing that i forgot to tell please uh, i will be sharing the notes on the telegram so join the telegram group also now we can say bye bye